I'm gonna keep going Did. as long as I can. Okay. If, if I end up dying like this, so be it. This is freedom. My name is Wayne Hollett, I'm somebody da. I was stationed in Korea 7778. I'm a retired police officer after 26 years. I served in the U.S. Army for four years. I am what they call a happy nomad. And I'm very happy to live the life I live because it's a very simplistic life. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of us are into uh, living a minimalist type of life. And even though I have a lot of clothing, I'm in the process of purging things because I know I don't need more than maybe seven or eight changes of clothes, period. How I, long have you been happy nomad life? I've been doing this. It'll be four years in April. You like it so far? Yeah. I, uh, I sold, well, after I retired, I sold my house and mm. I sold all of the uh, things that tied me in one state. Mm. I relocated to Nevada, mm -hmm. which I love quite a bit. Uh, and now, even though I don't, I'm a, I'm a resident of Nevada, I'm rarely there. I go throughout the country. I follow the sun. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're about four, four to eight degrees warmer than it is in Nevada. Mm -hmm. Now, by July, mm -hmm. I'll be up in uh, Montana or Wyoming because Nevada, just like here, is desert. Mm -hmm. And it'll be anywhere from 120 to 125 degrees. And that's just not something I, I want to do. You sold out your house. Yes. You alone now? Yeah, all my children are adults. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not married. Uh, and I, I travel alone, primarily. I have friends I connect up with through the RTR, which is the Rubber Tramp uh, mm -hmm. uh, people. And we meet at different locations and we hang out. And if there's no one to hang out with, I go out by myself. Right now, I'm just busy trying to enjoy life. Uh, and I don't know if I take pictures to hike or if I hike to take pictures. But I'm trying to just set up my rocking chair memories so when I'm too old to do what I do now, I can look back and say, oh yeah, I've been there, I've done that. I was in Korea from 77 to 78. About I was there a total of 13 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That time, 77, then I was 10, 10 years old. old huh? Yeah. How <laughs> was Korea at that time? Korea at that time was growing. Uh, it, was in the, it was the beginnings of its growth, from what I can tell. It was already a well-established country, but uh, they had a curfew. I don't know if they still have curfews or not, but when I was there, we had a curfew. You couldn't be out past midnight. If you were out past midnight, you were subject to be arrested or questioned or whatever. Uh, I don't know what it's like there now since it's been so many years. When I was there, we had a lot of great experiences in Korea. I did a lot of sightseeing. I had some uh, uh, South Korean soldiers who went with me, we called them Katusas, they would take me around to different locations of Korea mm -hmm. and introduce me to the culture. It was it was a very, very good tour. I enjoyed it immensely. Korea, I, I'll be honest with you, it's a, when I was there, it was an extremely safe country to be in. I felt very welcome there. I never had any issues there. Um, I had a chance to eat some dishes that I never thought I would eat when I was there, and I enjoyed my time there. My tour there was a very good tour. That time, the Korean people, they warm, welcome American yeah, soldiers? Yeah, they were very warm. They were very warm and very cordial. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember ever having any problems when I was in Korea at all. Mm -hmm. None. Uh, the people were very nice. They were very, very willing to try and help you if you didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. They would they would do a 180 degree turn if they had to to help you. So I mean they were they were just good overall. You know there was times when I uh, wanted to catch a bus or a train and I didn't I didn't speak Korean I didn't know it mm -hmm. so I'd find somebody and someone would help me or or a, a, a sub, South Korean soldier a Katusa mm -hmm. who was assigned to us would take me and and show me different places and. And uh, a couple of them took me to their households, that kind of thing. I had a chance to visit their families, and, and a lot of them were farmers or, wow. or, you know, that kind of thing. And they introduced me to their families and on. Mm. It, was, it was a good experience. The 8th Army. Eighth Army. In fact, on the back of my door, I have an emblem of the 8th Army, mm. the 7th Division and the 5th Division mm. on my door. And as you see right here, it says on the back of my van, the freedom and liberty 
that you are enjoying came at great cost. Thank the veterans and the first responders. And I truly believe that. Yeah, once you're a soldier, I think you never get totally relieved of duty. You're always a soldier, just like a Marine's always a Marine, a sailor's always a sailor, an airman's always an airman, Coast Guard mm -hmm. is always Coast Guard. Once you take your oath to protect the Constitution of the United States, it's for life. Okay, thank you. Yes. You are a police officer? Yes, I was a police officer in the Chicago area for over 26 years. I heard Chicago area is most of the Chicago, dangerous place. Chicago can be dangerous. I was very, very fortunate. Have you ever been in a dangerous situation while you were I'd a police officer? In, I had been in several dangerous situations as a police officer, yes. I wasn't uh, in trouble. You know, I didn't get indicted like a lot of other officers did. I never seriously hurt anybody physically, uh, and I did a great public service because mm -hmm. I taught a, a program called DARE, Drug Abuse Resistance Education, for 12 years. And that was to try and keep children from using drugs. Mm -hmm. So we would work from children from fourth grade to eighth grade, from elementary school to middle school, to try and influence them not to get involved with drugs. You know, it's not like the movies where you see cops drawing their guns every day and they're uh, putting people against the wall and da da da. I had situations where I did that, but that wasn't an everyday event for me. Uh, most of my uh, work was based on public relations and crime prevention. Okay. I did do a lot of law enforcement, of course, but my main forte was to try and keep people from committing crimes. So I would talk to neighborhood uh, watches and things of that nature to help them come up with ideas to try and prevent crimes. I would come up with ideas as a juvenile officer and as a senior advocate officer to try and help these people as far as juveniles find things to do other than get involved in committing crimes and help seniors if they were abused in any form in which a crime was being committed against them. You retired the police yes. officer. Yes. Mm. I retired as a police officer, and I'm glad I to be able to serve. I was very, very fortunate, very mm. fortunate to do what I did and help people. That was the main reason I became a police officer. I want to help people. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me just explain some things about my van. Uh, my van is a 2015. It's a GMC Savannah van. It's a rear wheel drive. And it's the smallest bedroom in the world. <laughs> I admit that. I have the smallest bedroom in the world. I'm How tall are you? I'm six, six feet tall, 200 pounds. I have 300 watts of solar on top. Mm -hmm. I have my sink leaning backward and sitting forward where I can sit there. Yeah. And I can use this thing as my table. So when I want to get on my computer, which is in this bag. It's portable toilet. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's, that's why I have it covered. That's not the first thing I want people to see. But that's what that is. It's for my availability. Everybody, everybody uses this. Yes, that's yeah. for my availability. Mm -hmm. This is uh, my customized cabinet. Mm -hmm. Wow, you yeah. made it this. Yes, yeah, custom made. I had it made just for that spot. Wow, it's nice. Area. I like that yeah. toilet. Yes, no, I'll, I'll no. show you. I'll yeah. undo it. No, I mean, I like this one. This, yes, yeah. and that's that's how it's based. Mm -hmm. And it keeps it keeps everything in place. Mm -hmm. And miscellaneous things up top. The rest are clothes mm -hmm. and other things. This is my entertainment center. Yeah. And I moved that out of the way. This is the entertainment center, and I have surround sound. Wow, you have TV here. Yes, that's nice. And I also have a Blu-ray player and so on. I just turned all that off. No need to have that on anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, turn that off. This is where I keep my meds, like my vitamins and things of that nature. Over here, I keep... of vitamins. Yes, I keep food over here on this shelf here. You can step in and look at it if you wish. Okay, thanks. I keep my some food there. Good. I basically eat meat. I eat some vegetables, but mm -hmm. I primarily eat meat. Yeah. And that's why I have a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. My refrigerator here yeah. is full of meat and full of meat. dairy products. Uh -huh. Yes. Because that's what I eat primarily. So I almost cook every day. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very good refrigerator and it uses very little energy. Very mm -hmm. little energy. If you look at the very front, I have it where it's blacked out at night mm -hmm. and it also reflects the sun during the day. So I can be in here in perfect privacy. Yeah. 
Okay. All of my windows mm -hmm. are limo windows, so you cannot look inside. Mm -hmm. You can stand here and look all you want, but you won't be able to see inside here at all. <laughs> Not at all. That's okay, a full so, size. Yeah, yeah it's a I full can, size bed. You can't, I can't see. see. I can move my hands. You won't even see me. Mm -hmm. I've had people walk up and try and look inside, and I'm looking right at them. Wow, look at this. Yeah, that's my full size bed. <laughs> oh, wow. It's yeah, it's very, very comfortable too. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. I like that. Yeah. Like I said, I have, awesome. a, I have a small bedroom, but the largest living room in the world. Mm. Now here we can go to the back. This is my box. I keep my cooking stuff and other things. Like I said, I can move the seat up and down. Mm -hmm. Here my batteries are one, two, and three. Okay. I also have offshore power right here. So when I visit my friends, I can mm -hmm. just plug in. Yeah. Here's the emblems I was telling you about. 8th Army, 5th Division, 8th, 7th. Yes. It's the emblem of 8th yes. Army. Yes. Wow. And then... 5th Division, 7th Division. These two units are no longer active. Mm -hmm. right, that's how old I am. <laughs> On this side, since this is the side I always park to get the sun, mm -hmm. I have this heavily insulated. Uh-huh. So I can keep all of keep it cool inside, mm -hmm. and you can see some of it up there. Yeah, but I don't have any on the other side, and I have some insulation on my back doors, mm -hmm. and that's just to try and keep everything as cool as possible. On the other side, you'll notice there's a step here, and that this goes up once I shut the doors. I'll just show you real quick. I just do this, the door go up. So that keeps me from wow. a step. I yeah. can't step down it's if it's cool. too high. Yeah. It's not, like I said, it's not a lot to my van. My van is my bedroom. Mm. I don't spend a lot of time here. I hike every other day. Like I hiked yesterday, today's my rest day, tomorrow I'll mm. go hike again. And that's what I do. I hike and I love the life I live and live the life I love. I don't take any prescriptions at all. And I'm mm. at a pretty good weight. Mm -hmm. My heart rate's usually in the 50s. Mm. And that's an athletic heart rate. So I'm in very, very good standing. Mm. And I thank, I thank uh, my country for having the ability to be able to get around and move around the way we do freely without being restricted. You know, mm. There's some countries that will restrict where you go. And they don't allow you to do this kind of thing that we're doing right here. Like we're out here in the mountains. How fortunate are we to be in the mountains and to be able to, to just move around freely? If I want to go to another part of Utah or back to Nevada or California, mm -hmm. I don't have to report to anybody. I don't have to show any papers. No. I just go. No. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And my mm -hmm. memory in South Korea was basically the same thing. I, I remember when I was traveling, nobody was asking me for papers, was saying, you can't go. You cannot go North Korea. Well, I know we can't go to North Korea, but mm -hmm. within South Korea, you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing. We're very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said before, your country, South Korea, is number one. Number one. So I'm just glad mm -hmm. to have had that experience. Mm -hmm. How much you bought this? Uh, I bought this. I got it brand new. You got it brand new? Yes. And when I bought it, uh -huh. it was listed at 63 but I paid 55 or 57 57 yeah it's not came out for the rv yeah it's like an rv but it's not it's a conversion mm. van that's what mm -hmm. they call this because it mm. did have captain seats mm -hmm. i took out the captain seats and i left the bench mm. and that's what my mattress is on the captain seats are in storage so when i get ready to get rid of this vehicle mm. i'll put the captain seats back in and i can just sell it as a conversion van it's almost sixty thousand dollars yes Sixty thousand dollars can buy any uh, like a big rig, RV, travel trailers, and yeah, you why buy, you choose you, this? Then? I chose this because I didn't want an RV. Mm. I wanted something that didn't draw a lot of attention. Mm. I wanted to be stealth, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do things I wanted to do. A good example: I could have gotten a van a lot cheaper, but I wouldn't mm. have had glass. Yeah, I wanted to be able to see all the way around me. I could have got a van a lot cheaper. But I wanted to make sure I had something called OnStar. Mm. I have satellite telephone in my vehicle. Mm. So if I'm in the mountains and you don't have a phone reception, and I don't have a phone reception, I can get out of my satellite and talk to somebody. That uh. came with my vehicle. So it's things like that that I paid a little extra for 
and make mm -hmm. sure I have some advantages because a lot of times I travel by myself. And when I travel by myself, I've been in mountainous areas where my phone did not work, but my satellite did. So if I needed help or if I needed to have some assistance, I could get it very easily. So that's why I spent a little extra. I may not be able to stand up straight like this, but when I stand up, I'm like this. That's okay. I'll do. I'll make that sacrifice mm. so I can have something that's going to be there to back me up. Because no one else has OnStar, and I'm not getting paid for that commercial. But it's it's well worth it to me. So you've been a nomad life for four years. Well, four, it'll then, be four years, April. Then, yeah, and then you keep going like. I'm gonna keep this? going as long as I can. Okay. If, if I end up dying like this, so be it. This is freedom, you know. If I don't like my neighbor and I have a house, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. If I don't like my neighbor and I'm here, mm -hmm. I just move. Yeah, you can't beat that. Right. If there's something like that fire they got going on over there, mm -hmm. if I live here permanently and I can't move, mm -hmm. I'm stuck. Yeah. But if it gets hazardous to where it's coming our way, mm -hmm. I could drive away. Right. Having the mobility of being a nomad is amazing. Also, I've seen places that I never would have thought I'd seen. And I have different states that I want to keep going back to because there's so much to see. Utah, a good example of mm -hmm. Utah. I've been to the Arches. I've been to Zion. I've been to Capitol Reef. I've been to uh, Zebra's uh, Canyon. I've been, to, I've been to a lot of different places there. But guess what? Mm -hmm. There's still more places to go in Utah. Exactly. There's yeah, places right. to go here, I, Arizona, that I haven't gone to yet. Places in New Mexico I haven't gone to yet. I've been to a few places there yeah. too. You can't do that if you have a house. You right. can do that if you have a vehicle mm -hmm. and yeah. a way of getting around. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. So you love it. I love this. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, a good way to live in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I worked and grew up in the city of the Chicago area. I'm not anywhere near the city now. Mm -hmm. And out here is peaceful. Mm -hmm. Everybody out here is out here for one reason. Peace and quiet and freedom. Well, that gave you more than one. But those are some of the reasons. They don't want the hassles that you have when you're in a city. Just like mm. you were saying right there. Mm. You know, children running and frolicking. I don't see any children running and frolicking here. Mm -hmm. But if they were, it wouldn't be a big deal. Because we're out here. Yeah. It's not like when you're in the city, when you have all that tension, you know. You can just sense the tension and people are on edge. They want they want to go at each, each other. If you live this kind of lifestyle, I can almost promise you, when you get back in the city areas, you don't feel like you belong. You feel like you need to be someplace else because you can feel the tension. You can feel the stress. This form of life, I think, will give a person longevity. I really do. I think it helps you to live longer because right. you're not as stressed. I really no do. stress. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Wayne. Today you're taking your time and uh, let us hear your story and a lot of good opinions. Well, mm. thank you so very much and goodbye to all those fine South Koreans. I really appreciate your country. Thank you. 안녕히 <laughs> 계세요. Thank you. Camping장이 너무너무 많습니다. 이렇게 
이렇게 너무 좋은 곳이 너무너무 많아요 아, 한국에 갖고 올 수도 없고 한국 돌아가면 너무너무 귀엽 너무너무 많이 생각날 것 같은데 